and and everything good about sport, but mainly they see her as an ambassador for Liverpool. She's one of them, and 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 you saw that come together tonight. And she got the fight that she she craved, an amazing fight against an amazing competitor in front where the crowd were with her in every minute of the round. I've never seen or been involved in an atmosphere like that at the Echo Arena before. To be the first female fight to headline here as well, another another record, another special achievement, but. Yeah, just a fantastic fight, and Michaela's not here yet, and hopefully she will be soon. But both of them deserve a huge amount of credit for what they did. It was a, it was another huge advert for the sport, a huge advert for women's boxing. I know the viewing figures tonight were incredible, and uh, and and it's testament to both of them. Now, Natasha had some nice things to say about your guys' relationship, but Ben, when it when you were building your stable and you were looking for pillars of boxer and people that you really could build around and champions that you could have and you know, just leaders for everybody. When, when you saw Natasha, I mean, what was your mindset going in? What was your goal? I mean, it's, it's clearly worked. <laughs> the mindset I think was, you know, this is one of the, the most unlucky fighters I've seen in the, in the professional game. She'd done so much for the sport and, and, and to have never achieved a world title. So have had decisions that have gone against her to have not got the fights at the right time that she deserved and, and had a lot of doors shut. I think boxing is a crazy game and, and there's a lot of things that you have to deal with. But when you, and I said that to her today, when you, these, these are the things that make it all worth it. These stories, these things that you can be involved in and to see her change your life change her family's life, achieve everything that she deserves professionally, have a legacy night like this in Liverpool as well to top it off. That's what the sport's about. You have tragedy in boxing, but you also have amazing, amazing things that take place. And yeah, it's definitely the proudest thing that I've done in my career. Um, the Natasha Jonas story started 15 years ago. For me, it started two years ago, but what we've been able to to do in that time has been, uh, yeah, the definitely, as I say, the proudest proudest thing that we've done. I think it's it's interesting when you look at the, the relationship between promoters and boxers, because obviously the boxers need to carry everything forward, but at times the promoters need to see what's there. And now you recap this week and you see murals being painted and you see turnouts like this and you see atmospheres and viewership for someone that, like you said, was unlucky. I mean, wh where do you take it from here? Or where do you want it to go from here? I, Natasha's going to take it, but where would you like to see it to go from here? Um, I think what you say is right. Boxing, British boxing is about creating hometown heroes and starting a stable from, from scratch with Chris Bill and Smith in Bournemouth and Savannah up in Newcastle. That's what the sport's about. And Tasha's obviously always been big here, but as you said, she's now an icon. She's got a huge, huge fan base behind her. And uh, where do we go next? It's Look, it's the last year probably in boxing, as you said. We just want to deliver the biggest fights, the biggest names for her. What more could she achieve other than those those big nights? And so whether it's Katie Taylor, if we can make that fight, whether it's Jessica McCaskill, whether it's more titles at welterweight, Sandy Ryan, there's, there's fights there um, and there's big fights there. And and we've done done all right so far. And, and hopefully we can have one or two special nights to, to finish it off. I'll come to Natasha, save the best for last, of course. I'm going to come to... Coach Joe Gallagher here. I mean, you were so locked in all week and you were massively complimentary of Natasha all week, talking about how coachable she was and how so important she was to your gym. I mean, similar question to Ben, just initial reactions of, of to see your champion keep winning and keep winning and then to eclipse tonight and have a main event and defend the title again. I think it was the manner in the win um, as well. I said in the build-up to fight, both girls would have to bite down on the gum shields. Both would have to adapt. Both would have to reply. It was a great fight. Round eight. I think it's got to be up for a round of the year. Michaela brought fire and Tasha just fought fire with fire. And every time Michaela came, Tasha came back. Michaela came, Tasha fell back. As in, listen, I'm going nowhere, do you understand? And uh, just when Michaela thought she'd be able to get a foothold and come down the street, Tasha was there punching and trading with her. Um, she wasn't shy in getting a, a trade off, which was worrying at times. But uh, when I watch her and I go out and she had her feet moving the first few rounds. I just, I do be quite in awe of her sat here now. I do be quite in awe of her. She's a fabulous lady and uh, just a class act. So just uh, in awe of her. I always love to hear, I mean, I don't want you to divulge your coaching secrets, but I always love to hear the, the interaction that you have with fighters in the corner. What were you saying to Natasha 
as you were entering into those later rounds where you know knew that she really had to grind out that win? Uh, I think it was after five rounds. I said to Tasha, listen, we'd say 4-1, but being kind to Michaela with 3-2. Let's reset, refocus. Let's go out. Round six is round one, and let's win three of the last five rounds. And we've won the fight, and it was just about keeping composure. I said in the corner to her, I said, listen, need a cool head, need a cool head in, the, in the hot kitchen, and uh, don't get carried away. The crowd and the punches, and Michaela's got to bring hell here. you just got to keep a cool head, and she wants to drag it in, and... I'd say Natasha did it and was sat here with and still uh, the world champion. And like Natasha said in the ring, it's not it's not for us to decide where Natasha's place is in sport, in history, in the city of Liverpool. But I would say she's definitely right up there, one of the very best boxers uh, of all time to come out of the city. I remember last time she fought in Manchester, you came up to me before the before the fight and you're like, hey, mention that she's that she's in here in Manchester and she trains here in Manchester. So you mentioned that she's a legend in Liverpool and then she trains in Manchester. I mean, it seems like city to city, she just keeps building these fan bases. I mean... You don't call them a stupid for no reason. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's an adopted man. She's won a few titles there now. She's, uh, won, she, won the, she won the WBC and she's defended the IBF here. And the, the, the turnout tonight... Um, which was which unbelievable when you feel where female boxing, I don't want to um, go down that line, but for where they thought they needed to have intense beef to sell a fight, where we needed the popularity of Katie Taylor for people to tune in. People tuned in tonight. People came out, paid hand earned money the third week of January in the new year to get behind Natasha. And that speaks volumes for the type of lady she is and, and the class person she is that paid the hard earned money. And Natasha and Michaela put on a good fight there tonight. And uh, I don't think no one who tuned in or has left the arena left disappointed tonight. They got what they wanted. And it's a credit to, to both girls that they're there tonight doing a great advert for female boxing. We talked about how the promoter helps, you know, put on the shows and maybe bring the spectacle to everything. And obviously the fighter has to carry the belts and carry their career, but the coaches always are really side by side and kind of helping the fighters through. I mean, where do you want to see Natasha go next as a coach? As a coach, I'd like her to go home and put a feet up. And, uh, <laughs> if go, you could see the ballista that's on my toe, I swear to God. Go home, put a feet up and uh, listen, just enjoy some time with Mila. It was a hard time over Christmas and New Year. Um, she would have been in Christmas Day for only I was ill, so she got away with that one. But like I say, New Year's Day, we're in the gym and it was tough over Christmas when you've got a, a little one with me, the seven, eight. So I go away, have a holiday, enjoy some time with a daughter and then regroup, sit down with Ben and decide where we go. I, I would love to see the Katie Taylor fight. I think there's great history there. They started the rivalry in 2012 in a fantastic fight. And I think the two of them to have the last dance together. They've won world titles from 135 up to 154 to see the two of them fight inside uh, an arena or Croke Park and Anfield, wherever. Um, but I just think um, the pair of them would be uh, they'd be ideal dance partners for the final dance. And uh, off she can go into the sunset there and uh, do it, succeed as a manager. Amazing. Well, Natasha, I'm going to come to you now. Save the best or last. You keep winning and winning and winning. I mean, at this point, I... I I'll leave it open into question for you. This win tonight in your hometown, in Liverpool, international fight, Sky, ESPN, a world title on the line, former world champion Michaela Mayer. In your recap the night for yourself, how do you feel? I said before the fight even started, if I beat Michaela Mayer, it'll be, it'll be the best win on my record, and, and it was. Um, she ranks top two in the uh, fighters that I've fought. I think only Katie Taylor is above her skill wise skill set. Um and yeah, she she proved that tonight. You know, we're both uh, very skilled, uh, high class elite amateurs moved into pro and I seen why she causes a lot of people trouble tonight. Um I, I wanted a quick start, I gotta give away a few of the middle rounds and, and finish strong, which which ultimately helped me win the fight. The pace of the fight, I think took a lot of people away. I mean, obviously there were talks and their coach talked about Hagler Hearns and all that stuff. Did you know that it was going to be a slugfest like that? Did you anticipate that? I, I kind of thought that eventually it would be. I knew she, she's always she's always got a, a good engine. I've seen that in her previous fights. I didn't know if she could, you know, bring that to, to welterweight um, because it is a lot of extra weight to carry. And I thought it took her a couple of rounds to get into it. Um, and I just thought, I think that was the experience I've, I'd had at that weight. 
Um, I had myself, or Joe jo had me, I think, three rounds up for the first three rounds. Um, so yeah, it was just it was, it was just a, probably a slow start, Costa. Now it's when you look at popularity of fighters, you have fighters that are popular in the hometown, maybe fighters that are popular in a couple of their cities. And then you start to look at fighters that become increasingly popular. And then you arrive at fighters that get murals painted of them. What, I mean, when you saw that, I mean, I got to know what that was like. Yeah, I think, first of all, I was just happy that it looked like me. Because <laughs> um, it is always hard to to get uh, like the same facial features. Um, so, yeah, it was an honor. And to take me little girl up to there and then to see me 24 foot on the wall in a school where she used to go across the road. Um, for me nan to be standing there uh, in, in her 83rd year looking at her granddaughter on the wall and um, being recognized and celebrated by the city was was huge. So um, it was a pri privilege um, to, to be recognized by the city of Liverpool. But um, I've had, uh, tonight, I've had people from Devon. I've had people from Scotland. Uh, there's people from Ireland, um, people from London all come up uh, and, and see me and obviously the people at Liverpool. And I just think that's a testament to how how big and how many doors that not just myself, but females across the globe and, you know, taking them hard fights and not taking the easy route as, as, as made women's boxing right now. I feel like you've accomplished so much in your career. I mean, is there anything on your bucket list that you want to accomplish? Is there anything you haven't checked off yet that you want to check off, whether inside or outside the ring? Where do we begin? Um, I think in Anfield, Ben, is a is a big shout. Um, I think we've got a, a great set of um, fighters that are, are born and bred here. Um, also with the likes of Adi Azim, who I know is a, bi a big Liverpool fan. Ben is a big Liverpool fan. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can we can get that. And I think the only belt that I'm missing in my collection is a WBA. So that automatically homes me in on Jessica McCaskill. So... All right, is that a little bit of a teaser of what you would want specifically of a potential opponent? Maybe. Yeah. Look, it's the biggest fights, isn't it? Look, we'd love to go to Anfield. We tried to go there last year um, with Beefy, and unfortunately they were, they, were, they were doing reconstruction, so it's definitely there. You need a big fight to do it, um, and that's what we'll be trying to make. But uh, look, I just want to cap off. I, I've known Tasha now for a long time. She's a credit to our sport. She really is. Anyone that comes into contact with her um, and, and see and, and sees her, it's like what Joe says, you're in awe of her. And every day she works hard and every day she achieves things and everything she touches seems to turn to gold every time. And uh, we will remember her for, for a long time. And um, yeah, I think a round of applause for Natasha and everything that she's done for the sport. So much talk. This week, and, and I feel like it's a common theme now, talking about the rise of women's boxing and how it's evolved. And I, I want to get all three of your opinions. So, uh, Ben, I'll come to you first. I thought we were done. Oh, yeah. I thought that was. We want to close it out. I thought I was. No, no, I'm joking. I thought I was filling. I'm sorry. Um, the growth of women's boxing, Ben. I mean, you've been a part of it with Sky Boxer, and Sky have really put a conceited effort in in growing women's boxing. We heard a lot of conversation about main events and extended rounds and things like that. And now we saw yet again another American fighter come over. I can speak for I, I'm living American. I can tell you that here women's boxing is put forward more than it is anywhere else in the world. So Ben, I mean, when you look at the growth of women's boxing, where do you think it can go and where do you think the evolutions can come next for the sport? The evolution just will come into the depth of, of, of the sport and, and more contenders and more fighters. I think Natasha and Katie Taylor and even Savannah Marshall, when they dreamt of being in professional boxing, the, the dream wasn't really there. They did it because of the love of the sport and hope to be the ones that break through. I think now the fighters coming through, the amount of women in gyms, females in gyms all up and down the country is because of Natasha, is because of Katie, is because of Savannah. So it's growing and growing and growing. As I say, the viewing figures tonight are off the scale and that's women's boxing. And, and who'd have thought that a few years ago? So... Caroline Dubois and, 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 and those fighters, Lauren and Karis and, and, and Fran Hennessy even coming through. She's 18 years old. You've got fighters now turning over 18, 19, not 30, 31. The sport is growing and we're going to see more and more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. 
And Joe, I mean, you're in an interesting spot because you've been a coach for quite a long time now. So you've seen the growth of women's boxing within the confines of a gym. Are you seeing more women start to train and want to participate and reach out for coaching and things like that? Are you actually, are you seeing the growth at the grassroots level? Yeah, when Natasha, I won't say when she started boxing, but she turned over professional, getting sparring partners were very far and few between. She used to do a lot of sparring with Scott Cardle, Stephen Smith, Anthony Crawler, um, because they're quite thin on the ground. But now, like I say, we've used Cindy, who won gold today. I have to congratulate her from Bolton. She's an outstanding talent. Then there's Paige, she sparred with Bree. Um, there's lots of good Dakota girls coming through. Dakota is another one I forgot to mention. Who? Dakota. Yeah, Dakota Dechiva. She's flying high in PFL. So even the crossover people are coming in. She's a good striker. So there's... Um, yeah, the, the academy, I run a, the Joe Gallagher Academy and the, the, the girls that are coming through there as well and they're getting called up for England and women's boxing, like Ben said, over time, the depth will grow and grow and grow and the appetite for it will grow and I'm sure there'll be people sat at home tonight watching this fight and looking up. I'm sure there'll be a handful of them go, I want to go to a boxing gym after watching that and uh, I'm sure they will do because you you cannot be inspired by what you have seen tonight with what Natasha did, but bo- women's boxing is is on is on the rise. And Al Mitchell said it as well. He said, "Listen, men's boxing he feels in America is dead, and it's women's boxing that's providing the fights, the competition, the big nights, the excitement." You want to look at like Chantel Cameron, Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor Serrano, Savannah Clarissa, Natasha with Katie, Natasha now with um, Michaela Meyer. The girls are fighting each other, and that's just inspiring the next generation coming through. Natasha, you have probably the most important opinion on women's boxing at this table. What do you believe is that next step, is that next evolution? What do you want to see? Because now you are a champion, you are an ambassador, you are a leader for women's boxing. Where do you want to help take it next? I think visibility has always been the key. We needed, you know, a big promotion like your skies, um, promoters like Ben, investing, encouraging uh, and supporting the dreams of these young girls coming through. Um, and yeah, I like like they both just to like reiterate what they've said, you know, once you see it, you can believe it. If, if you see it being done, you, you can believe it and you, you can you can achieve it. And there's young girls for a very long time in the rotunda, I was the only the only girl there. Um and now there's young girls that have got a pathways through um, to make it a career if they want to, a professional career. They can make it to the, you know, elite highs of, of the Olympic cycles. And, you know, I think structure, I think visibility, uh, funding and support. You know, boxing is a predominantly male sport and we, it can't just be a female movement. We need the men to support us in that. Puts a period on the press conference. I think can't sum it up any better than that. So appreciate everybody. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you all for sticking around tonight. I'm sure there'll be some opportunities for individual press, but we got to let the champ go rest. So thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Natasha. Thank you.